Hello! In this two-part video series, I would like to introduce you to a fascinating Chinese language called Hokkien. Hokkien is a language that is mainly spoken in the southeastern part of China's Fujian province and also the coastal areas of Taiwan. Due to the migration of Hokkien speakers in the past few hundred years, today its speakers are also found in many other parts of Asia, such as Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. There are 28 million speakers in Fujian, 13.5 million speakers in Taiwan, and up to 3 million speakers in the rest of Asia. Hokkien is sometimes also called the Southern Min language, which can be confusing because Southern Min also refers to the Southern Min language family, which comprises of not just the Hokkien language, but also other Chinese languages such as Teochew. In fact, the term Hokkien itself is also somewhat of a misnomer, as Hokkien refers to the Fujian province, which is home to many different languages and not just Hokkien. However, to avoid confusion, I will simply refer to the language as Hokkien in this video. One thing to note about Hokkien is that it is a relatively unique language when compared to other Chinese languages. To understand why, it is important to know that almost all of the Chinese languages today, such as Mandarin, Hakka, Shanghainese, Cantonese, are derived directly from Middle Chinese, much like how the Romance languages today came from Vulgar Latin. The Min language family of which Hokkien is part of is an exception. In fact, Hokkien is understood to have diverged from Old Chinese, the predecessor of Middle Chinese. But while Hokkien has diverged since Old Chinese, Middle Chinese also has had a huge influence on the Hokkien language since they evolved alongside. The reason for this difference is due to Fujian's exceedingly mountainous and riverine terrain, which presents huge barriers to travelling in and out of the region in the past, before modern transportation was invented. This means that there is an isolating effect on the language, and language changes in neighbouring areas do not easily reach speakers within the region. In fact, transportation is such an issue that even within Fujian itself, the languages have developed to become extremely diverse. I referred to Min as a group of languages spoken in Fujian province earlier, but the Min language family can be further divided into Southern Min, Eastern Min, Northern Min, Central Min, and Pusian Min, each of them a family of languages in their own right. Even within the Hokkien language, which is a language of the Southern Min family, there are many dialects spoken depending on where the speaker comes from. The most common dialects of Hokkien are the Quanzhou dialect, the Changzhou dialect, and the Amoy dialect. Due to this diversity, there is no standard way to speak Hokkien. And so if you're a Hokkien speaker, some of the pronunciations in this video may differ from yours. As I'm from Singapore, I will be pronouncing words in a way that will be more familiar to the Hokkien speakers here, which is a mixture of the Quanzhou and Changzhou dialects. Hokkien today is shaped by the migration and the integration of Han Chinese from the central plains in northern China to the region over the past two millennia. But there were several mass migration waves that have significantly influenced the language. One of the most notable waves of migration to the Fujian region came about when the Jin dynasty was invaded by northern tribes between 304 CE and 316 CE a period known as the upheaval of the five Hu tribes. The resulting chaos forced many from northern China to escape to the south, to Fujian, where they brought along their language to the region. A lot of the colloquial pronunciations of Hokkien words originated from this wave of migration. To understand what colloquial pronunciations are, you should know that in all Chinese languages, there are two types of pronunciations for the Chinese characters, the colloquial readings and the literary readings. Literary pronunciations are usually used in more formal settings, such as names and loanwords, while colloquial pronunciations are more commonly used in everyday speech. In some languages like Mandarin, most of the characters have only one way of being pronounced and there are only a few instances where there are differing colloquial and literary readings. In Hokkien, however, due to the linguistic influences from different dynasties, an astounding 40% of the characters 
have differing pronunciations. While a lot of Hokkien's colloquial readings come from its earlier influences, its literary readings largely stems from Middle Chinese pronunciations that were adopted later on during the Tang and Song dynasties from the 7th to the 13th century. As an example, let's look at the character for learn. When it is used in the context of the word school, we use the colloquial reading and it is pronounced as o. So school in Hokkien would be o deng. But if it is used in the context of the word student, we then use the literary pronunciation and it is then pronounced ha. So student in Hokkien is ha xing. Sometimes the choice of colloquial or literary reading for the same word depends on the context. For example, if I'm telling someone that I'm going to the university today, I would use a colloquial reading and say dua o. But if I were to read out the name of a university, it is more appropriate to use the literary pronunciation Dai Ha. So if we were to read out the name of the National University of Singapore in Hokkien, we would say Singapore Kok Lip Dai Ha. To further complicate matters, choice of literary or colloquial reading is also occasionally dependent on the dialect of Hokkien that you are speaking in. Here are a few more examples of differing colloquial and literary readings. Tao ge, ga gi, e dui, be ha, gya, zip heng, gun hang. Moving on, let's go through some aspects of the past which have since been lost in other Chinese languages but preserved in Hokkien. The first is the lack of labial dental consonants in the Hokkien language. Labial dental consonants are consonants like the F or V sounds that are produced by pressing the lower lips against the upper teeth. This is why if you ask a random Chinese person on the street on what is the first stereotype that they have of a native Hokkien speaker, many of them would likely tell you that the Hokkien speaker cannot pronounce the F consonant sound. Labial dental consonants were introduced into late Middle Chinese around the 10th century, whereby many labial sounds such as the B, B, and P consonants changed into the F and V consonants. Since all the other Chinese languages descended from late Middle Chinese, they all contain labial dental consonants. We can observe the introduction of labial dental consonants into Chinese languages when we hear the sounds of words borrowed from Indo-Aryan languages like Sanskrit or Pali that contain the B or P consonant. For example, the Chinese character for Buddha is pronounced as Fuo in Mandarin and Fat in Cantonese, but in the colloquial reading in Hokkien, it retains the original sound of Bud. Here are some other examples comparing the Hokkien pronunciations of several characters with its Mandarin counterpart. Bui, Fei, Bang, Fang, Bun, Fen, Pang, Fang. Another interesting feature of Old Chinese that has been preserved in Hokkien is the absence of retroflex initial consonants, which are sounds like zh or ch in languages like Mandarin. It is only in Middle Chinese that the retroflex initials were developed. Again, we can see this evolution when looking at the transliteration of foreign words. For example, one of the ancient Chinese names for India is this. Today pronounced as Tian Zhu in Mandarin. This term originated from the old Persian name for India, Hinduka. The sound Duka is represented by this character, which is pronounced as Tu in Old Chinese. In Mandarin, we can see that Tu has changed to Chu. In Hokkien, it is pronounced as Tio, and we can see that the initial consonant has not experienced the shift. Again, here are a few other examples comparing the Hokkien pronunciations with their Mandarin counterparts. Deng, Chang, Deng, Juan, Diong, Zhong, 
de cha. De is interestingly enough also the origin of the word tea in English. At this point, you may be curious as to why certain sounds are romanized the way they are in Hokkien. Why is pang romanized with a ph instead of just a p? And why is de romanized with a t instead of a d? That's because in Hokkien, there are voiced consonants, or what the ancient Chinese phonologists call muddy sounds. Voiced consonants are sounds that are made by vibrating the vocal cords. In English, the word zip is voiced, while sip is voiceless. In Hokkien, the letters B and P are used to distinguish the voiced B sound and the voiceless P sound. And PH is then used to represent the aspirated P sound. Let's take a listen to the following example of these three different consonant sounds. Bang, bang, pang. Likewise, we have the voiced and voiceless G and K pair. Here is an example. Ge, ge, ke. Like several other southern Chinese languages, Hokkien also preserves the M, P, T, and K final consonants, which are lost in Mandarin. This greatly affects Hokkien tones, as we will see in the next video. Here are some characters which end with these consonants. Gyap. I have gone through several aspects of the past that have been preserved in Hokkien, but there is no such thing as a static language, and Hokkien is no exception. It has also evolved in unique ways by itself. One notable change is the shift of the nasal consonants like the m and ng sounds to voiced plosive sounds like the b and g sounds. Cantonese on the other hand has preserved the nasal consonant sounds relatively well. Let's compare some Hokkien words with their Cantonese equivalent to observe this evolution. Gua Ngo Go N Ban Man Tu Bi Toy Mei Mokwe Mokwa Bi Jin Mei Yan Sin Bun San Man Also in many places, Hokkien has lost the A vowel. For example, these characters had the A vowel replaced by the O and O sounds. Siong Let's compare them to Mandarin, which has preserved the A vowel sounds for these words. Shang, Tao, Qiao. We'll end this video with a famous Tang Dynasty poem called Quiet Night Thought, recited in both literary Hokkien and Middle Chinese. See if you can notice some of the language changes that I've mentioned before. Zeng Ya Su, Li Bing. Ziang Ya Su Liu Ba Chong Jian Kan Guat Gong Jiang Zen Kan Yat Guang Gi Si De Xiong Song Nia Zie Di Xiang Xiang Gu To Bong San Ga Gia Du Miang Shen Ga De To Su Go Xiong Tay đủ sư cổ hiền